Now in the last video of this series we used a capacitor to help control a transistor switch right there this is an NPN bipolar junction transistor and the capacitor made it so it didn't turn off right away when we removed power we used the uh, jumper there to the uh, base it uh, just faded off as the capacitor discharged now we modified it again slightly a lot of circuits are just modified circuits of other uh, circuits we have a light dependent resistor here so that's controlling whether the transistor is on or off. Right now it's bright enough where the transistor's off. And uh, if we make the light dependent resistor darker, now the transistor is on. Pretty straightforward. We'll zoom back a little bit. So my uh, overhead uh, lamp here was at its brightest setting. Now it's second lowest. And uh, now it's at its lowest setting right there. And you can see we got about 12 milliamps, which is uh, the saturation point for the transistor right there that's as on as it can get so we can uh, make adjustments to the light sensitivity with the fixed value resistor if we want to and so here we have a schematic diagram of the circuit and uh, I'll try to go quick because we've uh, talked about switch circuits for the uh, bipolar junction transistor quite a bit lately I did not uh, measure the voltage of the base in relationship to ground but that voltage of course is important first off let's talk about when there is a bright light, or bright enough light, I should say, on the light dependent resistor. The uh, voltage, or the resistance, I mean, drops down dramatically if there's a fair amount of light on there. If I put a flashlight up to it, I can get it below 50 ohms of resistance. But in any case, in relationship to uh, 22,000 ohms of resistance, it doesn't take much light to get a lot lower. So we have a pretty good connection to ground to the uh, base. So there's almost zero volt difference from base to emitter right there. So the transistor's off. No base to emitter current means there's no collector to emitter current. Now, if we get it uh, dark enough, let's go uh, uh, best case scenario. We completely cover it. Cover it completely. No light falls in on at all. According to my LCR meter, which has a limit of 200 million ohms of resistance, mega ohms, that's the limit of the LCR meter. It goes above that. So there's going to be no conduction at all, practically speaking. And so current's going to flow freely through the 22,000 ohm resistor and uh, the base to emitter there. So it takes about 0.6 volts for base to emitter to conduct. It's a diode. So that's going to be about the maximum voltage we got across there. But in case, we'll have a current flow through there. The NPN bipolar junction transistor the 2N3904, in this case, probably has a gain of over 100. Maybe it's 200, maybe it's 300. But that means for every 1 milliamp of current from base to emitter, if it's at least 100, it's going to let 100 gain. It's going to let at least 100 times that current, 100 milliamps, to go from collector to emitter right there. And uh, we don't need that much in this circuit. We're only going to deal with about uh, 12 milliamps because that's what the load uh, limits. So that means it'll be saturated. Got enough base to emitter current to get the collector to emitter to conduct what the load is setting. And uh, so it will be on pretty easily. Now if we have a medium level of light and uh, the value of the fixed resistor will change it a little bit. But uh, in any case, we saw the results of the 22 kilo ohm resistor with the light dependent resistor. If we get uh, about 0.6 volts, but just barely, there'll be a little bit of current flowing through. And uh, so, Transistor won't be saturated. It won't let up to 12 milliamps, but uh, it'll let some current flow through. That's called the active region. If you see the LED kind of dimly lit, you know you're in the active region right there. There's a schematic symbol for an NPN bipolar junction transistor. The pin names right there. The arrow is pointing out. If it's pointing in, it's PNP. If it starts with 2N and it's a bipolar junction transistor, there's other uh, transistors types out there that start with 2N. But in any case, bipolar junction transistor, that should be the pin layout right there. Left emitter, middle pin base, right collector. Other part numbers will likely have a different pin layout. Uh, pretty common right there. One cool thing about this uh, circuit now is that it's completely electrical. I don't have any mechanical part moving at all. There's photons falling on the light dependent resistor and electrons moving throughout the circuit. As long as the electrons don't uh, create too much heat, they don't modify the part at all. Electrons can shift from atom to atom if it's a conductive material really easily. So this doesn't change unless it gets too hot. You could burn out a component 
if you do something wrong. But otherwise, there's no moving parts. Should last at practically forever, as long as you keep heat down. And another cool thing about this circuit, I did other switch circuits, but uh, they didn't respond to a light, other than the ones where I have a light dependent resistor or a photo diode. And uh, so that's a really easy way we can modify a circuit to act quite a bit differently. Now it's responding to light. And so now we'll take a closer look at the physical circuit. The uh, 2N3904 here, the flat side is to the right. And uh, so that means emitter down here that's connected to ground, base to that jumper, and then the collector to the short lead, the cathode of the LED, line lead the anode to our current limiting resistor. Got to put the LED in the right way for it to light up. Otherwise it'll block uh, too much current. Now, I also got out my uh, pocket oscilloscope right there. Looks like I was given it noise right there with my body. But in case, we're gonna measure the voltage at the base in relationship to ground. So you can see the red alligator clip, clip to the jumper going to the base, and the uh, black one to ground right there. So that's our voltage difference there. As I said before, it cannot rise above about 0 0.6, 0 0.7 volts approximately right there. So each square is a volt. And uh, we're about 0 0.7 it looks like below, maybe even 0.8. So what we're gonna do is, uh, I can press this. Now we have the uh, voltage highlight. That's the voltage for each square going up. Uh, there's a little dial here for this particular one. And I want to make that 0.1 volts right there. So now each one of those is 0.1. And I don't know how accurate this is. That seems a bit high, but uh, maybe that is accurate. So we got a little bit more than a 0.7 uh, volts at the base right there. You can see that uh, we got about 12 milliamps at the power supply right now. If I uh, zoom back, and uh, that's because it's dim enough. If I cover the light pen resistor, make it even darker, it's gonna hold about uh, steady. Now, if I make the overhead brighter, now we're in the active region. It's limiting current through the uh, load. Uh, looks like it cut it somewhat close to half right there, active region, make it a little bit brighter. Now it's probably off fully, at least uh, well below one milliamp. Make it brighter and it's uh, even more off. And you can see the voltage change there as I uh, change it. If I got a flashlight on there, we would get it uh, pretty close to zero volts right there. So, in any case, hope you enjoyed. To avoid confusion later, I'm gonna set this back to one volt because that's usually what I expect. So, hope you enjoy. Make sure you check out one of the other videos I'm posting to the screen and check out the links down below. They all help out a lot. I would appreciate it. I'll see ya in the next video.